Hey, thank you so much for checking out today's video. I'm Pastor Matt, this is Pastor Adrian, and we pray this message blesses you and encourages you all throughout your week. Absolutely. For any more information on how to be praying with us or to become a part of our community or to give, please head on over to takeovergr.com. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Got ya. Um, what's up, guys? How we doing? Yeah? Good? Give me a thumbs up if you're good. Let me see them thumbs. All right, there we go. Joe, you got to put them up, bro. Um, all right, so I am talking about something that's been kind of just like uh, on my heart, maybe about like a month or so. I've had a lot of stuff uh, that's been going on between me and the Lord, all really good things. And I was like talking with Sydney on trying to figure out like, man, of all, there's like seven or eight things that God's just been like revealing to me and just been stripping down. And I was like, how do I kind of put this together? And what is specifically for our team? So I wanted to just kind of share, um, yeah, just some stuff that's been on my heart, some things that the Lord's been teaching me that applies, I think, to all of us. Um, and it's going to be good. So I don't have a title, but if I did have a title, it would be Your Kingdom Come, Your Will Be Done on Earth as it is in Heaven. And so this concept of the kingdom of God, God's will being done, like heaven on earth has been just like stuck in my head for like a month. And um, I've just been like praying, thinking about this. Like it's just such an interesting idea, like heaven on earth, when you really, really think about it, right? It's like, what does that actually even mean? Um, and so I, I kind of concluded like two points of what that means. Obviously, there's going to be more, but just for today's sake, um, I have a couple of things I wanted to share around that. Um, but before I wanted to jump into that, I wanted to just kind of lay some groundwork. And you guys have heard the term God is love, right? And I feel like that's like, me and Sid were talking about this, like it's been like the meaning of what that actually truly means has been lost because it's just this very common God is love. So I wanted to read some scripture that is just so profound. First John chapter four, starting at verse 15, it says, if anyone confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God resides in him and he in God. And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has in us. God is love. And the one who resides in love resides in God and God resides in him. Verse 17, by this love is perfected with us so that we might have confidence in the day of judgment because just as Jesus is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect fear drives, perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears punishment has not been perfected in love. We love because he loved us first. And this whole idea of like God loving us first has wrecked me because uh, Francis Chan gave a message at the send and it kind of talked about this idea. And I, I was convicted and kind of realized that um, I have been so good for the 10 years I've been following Jesus. I've been so good at loving God. Like me, myself, like I love Jesus. I will go crazy, do anything he asks me to do. Um, I mean, I went to Nepal and almost died like twice. Like I'll go, I'll go to the ends of the earth, I'll do anything. Um, but I realized that I'm actually not very good at letting God love me. And there's a really, really big distinction between the two. And the Bible says that, that we love because God loved us first. So if I'm actually better at loving God than letting him love me, I'm out of order with how God had created things to be. And so this whole month, this whole couple months, this summer has been me learning how to let God love me. Um, and I had this revelation just yesterday as I was thinking about this, like the idea of, um, of heaven coming to earth, it really is as simple as like letting God love us. Because heaven, for me, I'm kind of my description I would say is like, that's wherever God is, wherever he lives, where he resides. In its most simple form, right? Like heaven is where God's at. We, we think of heaven, we think, you know, up in the sky above the clouds, oh, God is up there. So the idea of like Jesus saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, like I think he's saying that because he is God here at hand, like in person with us. And so this idea of like having heaven on earth for me is like simply one, receiving God's love, and then two, just his presence. So I kind of want to go through some of this real quick and um, have a couple other scriptures to share. So 
Receiving God's love is something that is necessary to our identity as a Christian. It's necessary for our day-to-day walk. Um, and Francis Chan was talking about, I think it was like some uh, Corinthians, the love of Christ compels us. And so he was talking about like, we don't do things um, to try to earn God's love. So like when we're serving, it's not because it's like, oh man, like I got to earn God's love and all these things. It's like, no, I actually, he loves me so much that now I'm compelled to go out and to do something for him, right? So um, it's just this mindset that we got we to gotta kind of switch and, and almost repent for having it out of order and be like, no, God, you actually loved me first. Like, let me, let me learn how to be loved by you and then I can do things because I know that you love me so much. Um, So sub point for receiving God's love, we need to know his love and let it transform your heart. And in Romans 5, 5, it says that the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And so this is actually a thing that that we we go through is literally our hearts are transformed, not by anything that we do ourselves, but literally by God's Spirit just being poured into our hearts. So if for you, you're like, man, I also have a hard time receiving God's love. Like you need to check your heart and you need to really open up your heart and you need to be vulnerable and allow the Holy Spirit to pour in God's love into your heart and to transform you. Um, the second sub point is to know your need for God and to admit it. And so um, one of my favorite worship leaders said something that was like so profound. He said, I need God to need God. And I was like, wow, that, that describes my life so much <laughs> because there's so often where I don't, like, I know I need God, but I don't feel like I need him or do the things that would reflect me needing to, to be with God and stuff. So um, we have to admit our need and we have to confess that and be like, God, I need you so much. Like, I feel like the more that we can come to the end of ourselves and realize that, um, and realize that we really can't do anything without him, like the more he's going to transform our hearts and we're going to be able to receive his love and receive his power and he's going to operate through us in a greater capacity. It's like what Pastor Matt talked about last week, like when we get low, we have to realize that, man, I'm actually nothing. I'm actually nothing without God. Um, and then the last part is to abide. Um, I know we've talked about this a lot, and it's, but it's, I mean, it's so true. Like we have to, we have to abide with him. Um, and I, I think even in that, in John 15, Jesus says that like, apart from me, you can do nothing. So that's why we have to abide is because when we're not abiding, like we're not doing anything that's pleasing the Lord. So we have to abide first. And then John 15, nine, um, it says, Jesus is saying, just as the father has loved me, I have also loved you. So abide in my love or remain in my love. And it's like crazy. Like <laughs> the father loves Jesus so much, right? You guys know that, right? right? Yeah, yeah. The father is crazy about Jesus. He loves Jesus. Jesus says, just as my father has loved me, so I have loved you. What? Like, this should really shake us to our core, because the father is crazy about Jesus. This is my son, my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. That's how Jesus feels about us. Like, that, that is insane. That just blows my mind. I, I, yeah, I just can't even... Can't even comprehend it, honestly. Um, and then another part of abiding, 1 John four thirteen. it says, by this we know that we reside in God and he in us. Reside could be synonymous with abide. Um, so we know that we abide in God and he in us in that he has given us of his spirit. So guys, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is like your connection to the Father. It's your connection to heaven. And there's like those two scriptures where the love of God is poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And then this one right here where we know that we abide and reside with God because he has given us his spirit. And so we need to be continually cultivating and developing that relationship with the Holy Spirit on the inside of us because he's going to point us to Jesus and then Jesus is going to point us to the love of the Father. And then we're going to have a better understanding of who we are, who God is, and then we can actually actively walk out the calling that God has given us. That was almost tragic, but it wasn't. So um, second part, so it's present. So the first, like what does heaven on earth look like? Receiving God's love, just knowing that God loves you so much. Like, I mean, dude, when we're in heaven one day and I mean, I'm just so convinced that we're gonna be like, holy cow, like we just all underestimated the love that God has for us. Like I am convinced that we are never gonna actually fully understand until we're there. But God loves us so much and really desires for us to have that taste that he's given us his spirit to live on the inside. Um, So then the second part is his presence. And so that's just actually like God being here. And the Lord's been so, so gracious and been pouring out his presence. I mean, it's just, I feel like it's just been like, 
you know, increasing and increasing and increasing. And I, I don't believe it's going to stop. I think we continue to pray that God would continue to pour out his presence, like his tangible manifest presence. Um, because Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it's like, like I was saying earlier, because he was actually here. Like, I think he brought the kingdom because he's like, yo, I'm the king. Like when the king comes, so does the kingdom, right? So he's here. He brings his kingdom. So when we invite him into this room, then the atmosphere changes, right? You guys love that song. The atmosphere is changing now. The spirit of the Lord is here. It's really good. And, um, and so these are, these, my biggest thing I want to just say is like, these are realities that, that we, we should be living every day. Like we should have, be having daily encounters of receiving God's love and then daily encounters with his presence. And this is for me too. Like I'm not doing this every single day. I, I need to be doing this every single day because I am convinced that we just underestimate and underappreciate God's love for us. And I don't want to go the rest of my life, even another day, like not having the full revelation of his love for me poured out through his son, Jesus, giving us his Holy Spirit to live on the inside of us. So, so I just want to ask a question, and that is, what would your life look like if on a daily basis you spent time actually just receiving God's love? And then what would your life look like if on a daily basis you just spent some time in his presence? And I, I'm convinced that that's what it looks like to have heaven on earth in our lives. And Everything else that we think of that would be heaven on earth, I think would follow from that point. But we need to actually just receive his love, rest in his love, and then just be, t be with him in his presence. And that's all I got.